Lisa He here of Borderlands Bakery and I'm here to talk to you today about how I use food dehydrators in my cookie decorating. So where I'm sitting now is actually exactly where I sit to decorate cookies when I'm at home. I can show you, I've got my table here. These are my notes and my sample cookies and my mess. This is real life, you guys. And then right on one side of me, I've got my dehydrator so that when I'm done working with cookies right here, I can easily transfer them over. So in this video, we're going to go over what is a dehydrator, why cookie decorators like using dehydrators, what are some pitfalls of using dehydrators and things that you should watch out for when you use one, as well as um, my recommendations for some dehydrators that I like that I've used and that I've read reviews for and I think would be helpful for varying levels of needs for dehydrators. So what are dehydrators? Dehydrators are kitchen appliances most commonly used to make jerky, dried veggies, dried fruits. Um, you can even use it to make dog treats, for example, just cut up some like chicken feet or something and dehydrate it and your dog will go nuts for it. But cookie decorators love using dehydrators as a tool in their process because it does several different things. So first thing, it helps your royal icing dry shinier and dry faster. So when you're decorating cookies, oftentimes we do many, many layers to get the design we need. For example, we had to put on the base layer for this cookie. We waited it for it to dry. And if you're in a very humid kind of climate like Florida or something like that, sometimes it takes forever for your base layer to dry, maybe overnight, maybe even like 20 hours. Um, so a dehydrator really helps speed up that process instead of having to wait a whole eight hours before you do your airbrushing or your next layer you can stick that in the dehydrator um, if you're in a very dry area about 15 minutes at the lowest setting would work to get that first layer on and ready for airbrushing or the next layer of details so that definitely helps so let me walk you through a scenario where I would use a dehydrator and how I would use it. For example, if I've got these cookies here, you can tell that the base layer is a white flood and I've got the yellow airbrush on the white flood and then I have the detail piping on top of it. So it's basically flood layer airbrush layer and then detail layer on top of that. And you can also see that there are these um, black marker outline details on it. So the way I would approach this is I would make my cookies, let them fully cool. I'd flood all of my white and I just put them all on the dehydrator uh, tray, as many as can fit on one tray, outline them all, throw them in for about 20 minutes at 95 degrees, and then let them cool for about 10 minutes in the dehydrator, and I'm not moving them so that I'm not accidentally tipping the tray, causing cracks on the surface of the icing, which can happen when it's not totally cooled down. As the icing cools, when it's done with the dehydrator, it will harden up a little bit more. So for me, I'm in Sacramento, California area, and it's a very dry here. I can take the cookies out after 20 minutes, and it's actually really quite um, solid around the, the surface of the icing. I let them cool, I'd airbrush them, and then I'd actually put them back in the dehydrator for like five more minutes. That way the airbrush completely dries and it's pretty much ready for that top detail icing layer. So we're not ready for the, uh, the, the, the border yet, just the detail. So five more minutes in the dehydrator, I let them cool again, and then I pipe on my details, which is my writing, and I put that back in the dehydrator for another five minutes, and then I take it out and I let it cool completely and dry completely for about eight hours. And, that, and then after that eight hours, the icing has dried all the way through and it's like a hard um, surface when you tap on it. Then I apply the final bordering with a edible marker. 
and then wait about a couple more hours for that to totally dry and then I package. The way I like to operate today is end to end from baking to final packaging which is heat sealing to be done within a 24 hour period for cookies that I plan to sell or to gift or something like that. Um, I just find that works the best for me. I'm highly motivated. Before I had a dehydrator, I was not able to complete that whole process in a 24 hour period. It'd take about 48 to 30, uh, 36 to 48 hours to get that whole process done. So especially when it's dry or even in the winter when it's very windy and there's just wind circulating your house, I feel like my cookies dry out faster. So if I can shorten the amount of time that my cookies are sitting out being worked on, I feel like they stay more moist. So I hope that example helps um, walking you through how I would use a dehydrator. Again, absolutely not necessary, but a great tool. Cookie decorators who use royal icing use dehydrators in their cookie decorating process for several reasons. One, royal icing dries much faster when placed in the dehydrator than if we were just to leave it uncovered. Two, it adds a level of shine to your royal icing cookies that is really, really hard to achieve if you just left it alone. So you can kind of see when I'm turning this cookie against the light that it's very shiny. So it's aesthetically very pleasing. Using a dehydrator also allows you to retain more puff or dimension on your icing. And having that um, airflow also means that you get less cratering in the small areas of your icing because you are drying it ASAP, disallowing the time to help that icing um, lose that surface tension, which results in cratering. We all know how long it takes to decorate cookies, especially because of all the layering and all the different techniques you can do. And using this guy has saved me so much time. And if there was one piece of life-changing equipment, I would definitely say, if you know you're gonna be working on a lot of royal icing cookies, get a dehydrator. You will be so glad that you did. When you live in a climate that has super, super high humidity, you must understand that it takes a long time for your icing to dry. If you got a dehydrator to help that process along, that was significantly cut down on how much time um, it would take for your icing to dry. So one of the most commonly asked questions I get is, doesn't the dehydrator dry out your cookie? And the short answer is, yes it can, but it really depends on how you use it and what the bake of your cookie is. So for example, if you baked a cookie that's like crispy, of course, it's going to take much shorter amount of time to get it even crisper than if you underbake just slightly. And what I mean by underbaking, it really depends on your recipe as well. It's not that it's raw in the middle, it has cooked all the way through, but you've stopped it just then. So it's still got some chew and when you break it apart or kind of squish it into itself, it does still have squish. So one of the other things to think about is people prefer various types of cookies. Some like thick, some like thin, some like crisp, some like soft and chewy. So all those factors play into how you use your dehydrator. The longer you leave it in, the more it's going to dry out. For my cookie recipe, because it is a high moisture dough, especially my lemon vanilla bean cookie recipe, um, which you can purchase on the website if you'd like, it has a lot of things in it that help the dough retain moisture. My goal for my recipe is to have it chewy for as long as possible. Therefore, I really want to kind of minimize the amount of time in the dehydrator. I also live in a very dry climate, so I know that if I left my icing out even for two hours, it's already crusted over, I can add the next layer. If I use a dehydrator, I have a rule where if you live in a climate that's pretty dry, 15 minutes per layer at the lowest setting, which is usually 95 degrees for almost every dehydrator, then you should be good. Move on to the next layer after that. Um, if you live in a very high humidity area, I've known people who have left their cookies in a dehydrator at 95 degrees Fahrenheit for four to five hours with zero adverse effects to their cookie texture while allowing their icing to dry faster. 
So I'm going to have some guidelines in my blog post as well that should tell you, you know, if you live in a super high humidity, like 80, 80 plus, then you can leave your cookies in there for even up to eight hours at the lowest temperature. And I've heard great things about that. Um, with all baking, and especially if you run your own business, it is crucial, crucial, crucial to make sure that you run trial tests to see what works for you before you take anybody's word for it and run with it for an order or something like that. So I suggest if you're going to invest in a dehydrator, you take the time to figure out all the different timing that you need for whatever technique techniques that you want to do based on your next layer. So if I was going to be airbrushing on that layer, maybe I would actually leave it in there for 20 minutes, 25 minutes. That way it crusts just a tad more before we can put like a stencil, a little bit of pressure on it or anything like that. Okay, so I'm gonna refer back to my notes here to make sure that I cover everything, but here are the general guidelines for how to go about using a dehydrator. The one that I have behind me is a Gourmia 6 tray. It is so, so, so popular. I've linked it below as well as in my blog post and it's also in my Amazon shop. So I will give you links to all of these. Don't worry. Um, it has a sliding lid on the front and the trays pull out like this. And this is what the tray looks like straight out of the box. It's plastic, it's got a ridge on the end so that your stuff doesn't fall off, which I really, really, really like. And then um, it slides in. So I tell people a couple of different things. We just talked about the cookies drying out, right? So what I like to do is I like to cut up silicone mats. You can get really, really cheap Amazon Prime ones, or you can get dehydrator mats. I like silicone for cookies because it's better for trapping the moisture in your cookies. So I always line them with silicone mats um, if I'm going to be using a dehydrator. And Amazon Prime has like mats, two for like $10. I mean, it's, it's really cheap. So I definitely recommend that you line your trays as well. Also, um, I do not recommend that you line your trays with wax paper because it's going to be warm in there and that wax is going to melt and come off on your cookies. So no wax paper. Parchment is okay. Um, it can kind of flap because there's air. So this is why I definitely still prefer silicone mats. They are heavier. They will help you trap moisture better. They also got some built-in grip, you guys. If you're like this, and you're moving your trays around, the last thing you want is to have all your hard work slide off. One of the other huge things that I hear about is when you are done dehydrating your cookies, I highly recommend turning off your dehydrator immediately and letting your cookies come back down to room temperature for about 10 to 15 minutes. Here is why. Um, when your cookies are drying and they've been drying for about 10 to 15 minutes in the dehydrator at the lowest setting, it forms a crust on your icing. It still needs time to fully dry. Dehydrators are not used to fully, fully dry your cookies. It's really to help you in between layers. To fully dry them, you still need to set them out and give it that eight to 10 hours. But it can help up that flood, flood layer process or additional layer process. However, you gotta be super careful. Because it's warm after you've set it in there for a while, the icing under it is actually very liquidy. Under the, the crust is actually very liquidy. So if any kind of movement will cause that crust to crack. So if you've got, you know, like your whole tray full of cookies and you're grabbing them out from the dehydrator, you want to be very careful that you put your hand fully under your tray. That way, you're not, you're not allowing the tray to kind of move around, which causes cracks in your cookie. So I, I can't tell you how many times people have come to me saying, oh my God, the dehydrators cause cracking in my icing. And like 99% of the time, it's not the dehydrator causing that. It's when you take them out and they're still warm, and you accidentally, you take them out like this or like this, 
and your tray starts to tilt, that movement causes cracks on the icing. So I always tell people to be super careful. Either turn it off, let it cool down for 10 to 15 minutes, just untouched. That way your icing has a chance to cool down and solidify a bit more. Or if you want to take them out right away, hand under so that nothing is tilting and you're not distributing the weight all funky to cause those cracks, all right? Super, super important. A dehydrator is awesome for royal icing cookies like these and like these and like these pure royal icing cookies. However, if you're going to be adding fondant or using modeling chocolate on your cookies, I do not recommend putting them in the dehydrator. That temperature is gonna cause both of those things to melt. So if I'm working on cookies like these and I have royal icing and modeling chocolate or fondant, I like to finish the whole part of it that has royal icing, use a dehydrator as needed. And if I know I'm gonna be done after that, I'm not gonna need the dehydrator again. I add the modeling chocolate or fondant last. So, doesn't mean you can't use them in your cookies, it just means that you have to be conscientious of when you put them on, all right? Mixed media is awesome. Just learn to do it in the right order and you can do pretty much anything. All right, so what are some things that you should look for when you're shopping for a dehydrator? First of all, there are hundreds, if not thousands of various dehydrators out there on the market. And one of the things that you wanna look for is size. So how big is it? Is it gonna fit in your space properly? Um, how many trays are there? Is that going to be enough for you? Is that overkill for you? So all those things are things that you should definitely take into consideration. The next thing that you wanna consider is shape. So there are rectangular ones, there are square ones, and then there are cylindrical circular ones. I've actually owned a circular one in the past that I started out with, and I've owned um, now two rectangular ones. I actually have another one that I will show you shortly. And I find that circles are hard to work with. It's hard to kind of Jenga all your cookie shapes. It's hard to get the most out of that shape. And it's also difficult to find mats that fit circles very well. So I steer away from circles. There's also gonna be another reason why I steer away from circles and I will talk about that shortly. The other thing you wanna think about is quality or finish. I don't feel like this is crazy, crazy important. Plastic is great, stainless is great. Um, Stainless is super easy to clean. I feel like everything stainless is easy to clean. Stainless bowls, stainless appliances, just like the dehydrator. So if I was to turn back time and I had all this information, I'd probably pick a stainless steel one, but honestly, that's not a make or break thing for me. Okay, so what is important is tray logistics. What does that mean? So how much space is between each tray? because that will really drastically affect how much cookies that you can put in there of a certain thickness. So as you can tell, I've got these two cookies here. This one is thinner than this one because this has florals. You just wanna make sure there's enough clearance between trays that you can get your thicker cookies in there or you are conscientious enough to remove a tray if you've got extra thick cookies that you're working on so that you don't accidentally bump the top and ruin your icing. Tray position is actually another thing that you want to consider. I talked a little bit about round cylindrical dehydrators earlier, and the reason why I think um, I don't prefer that is because those tend to stack on top of each other. You gotta like use both hands, remove them, and it's a lot of work. When you're just sliding, this is a lot easier. Even if you have to use both hands to get down there, slide, pull it out, to me that's easier than maneuvering whole trays of them that you gotta stack. Um, the skeleton is standing alone, so one of the things is if you know it's not gonna be that mobile, that's fine. I can see a benefit in getting the round one if you know you're gonna be moving it all over the place. It is actually easier to move because they are stacked. You can make them as tall or as short as you want whenever you want. One of the other things to consider is how your trays are made and 
what features it has. So this one comes from my Sasori uh, dehydrator and this one comes from my Gormia dehydrator. And they do the same things. They're both trays, but this is completely flush and this has a ridge on the end. This prevents your cookies from falling out because if you accidentally got this tilting motion going on and it hits the side, it's okay. This one, if you've got cookies straight on there, it's gonna slide like crazy. Even if you used a silicone mat, yes, that'll give it some grip, but a little bit of an extra tilt and your cookies go flying. So that is the one downside, I would say, of my Sasori dehydrator compared to my Gourmia one door mount position. I know this is like kind of a seemingly small thing. So with the round ones, there's no door, they stack. So you kind of just start at the top. That's like your door or your lid and you kind of go down. Um, my Gormia has a slide on slide off top. If you've accidentally got a tray that sticks out a little bit more and it slides on, it, it obviously gets stuck wherever that tray is. But honestly, I didn't know that I cared about door orientation until I got my Sasori one, which is an open close, like a refrigerator, like a cabinet door, which I'm gonna show you right now. This is my Sasori, and aside from the metal trays that have no ridges, I absolutely adore this thing. It has a hinged door and some magnetic closures snaps nicely closed. I wish I had gotten this kind of mechanism to start with over the lid because that's just one less piece of equipment to deal with, one less piece of plastic to accidentally drop in some cases. So fan position, um, it's not something that people think about often, but it is super important. Most of the round ones and most of the lower end ones have a fan at the bottom with stacking trays. So they don't have this outer skeleton, they have trays that stack directly on top of each other and you have to remove each one in order to get to the next tray. For dehydrators that are more standalone, they usually have a fan at the back. So for this one, it's at the back and my for my Sasori, it's at the back as well. Um, back, side, you know, whatever we want to call it. And that actually helps more for cookie decorators because that allows the airflow to come in from the direction of the side, or even if it's on top, that's better. It's not coming from the bottom up. From the bottom up, you're not getting airflow as direct as possible on the, the icing of the cookie. You're getting it more on the bottom of the cookie. So when you shop for a dehydrator, I highly recommend getting fans that are on the side. I actually think that's more common now. I would just watch out for the stacking ones that are usually on the bottom. Okay, so having temperature control on your dehydrators is super, super crucial. Your icing is gonna get real messed up if you dry it too hot. So what we're looking for in, in a dehydrator is a 95 degree Fahrenheit setting. And usually that's very common for the lower end bottom set uh, heat setting. So 95 degrees Fahrenheit is usually the lowest that dehydrators will go. And that is the temperature that the icing sets at the best. I have seen people go up to 105 with not really any problems at all. But the higher you go, you're gonna get ripples in your icing. Think about it, right? You're blowing air and you're drying it at the same time. If your air is vigorous and warm, causing your icing to really break down, it's gonna start movement almost like waves and then it's gonna dry at the same time, so that's why there's rippling. Okay, so final thing is you wanna think about how much they cost. Dehydrators, I've seen them as cheap as like $45, as expensive as like $500. Um, I sit in the medium practical side of things. So I usually like to spend about a hundred for a dehydrator. I think that gets you superb quality and great value. So for a hundred dollars, you can get something that's very practical. Um, I feel like the lower end ones are the circular ones, are the airflow from the bottom ones, plastic or 
the tray is stacked so there's no like outer shell or skeleton. So I definitely say if you're on a budget, I might actually steer you more towards using a fan on your cookies because it achieves mostly the same thing. If you're on a budget and you live in high, high humidity, I, I would love for you to find a way to hustle, hustle, hustle to make that $100 and make the investment in a decent um, dehydrator with a fan on the side that's around $80 to $100 six trays so you get the most out of your money you can make that money back by selling like a couple dozen cookies um, it's really really worth it to spend between that 80 I would even say go up to 120 if you can afford it so average of a hundred dollars will get you a very decent dehydrator all right so now that we've talked thoroughly about dehydrators and how they're used for cookie decorating I'm going to go over my specific recommendations for dehydrators and why I think they fit certain needs. If money is not an option and you're going through high volume production, so we're talking about like, you know, 10 dozen cookies a week or something like that and you can't work, you know, that whole week, you got to get them done within two days, I think an Excalibur 3900B is awesome because it has plenty of room, um, it's really high quality, they've got great support. All those things are really needed when you're doing high volume cookie production. Some really practical midline dehydrators, I've got two for you and they are ones that I both own and I'm not saying this because they paid me to say this, I'm saying this because I've used their products and I love it. Um, the Gourmia is a great one. You can get it on Amazon and oftentimes it goes on sale. You could grab it for between $80 to $100. So worth it, you guys. Get a Gourmia. And if you can spare a little bit more, there is um, the Sasori that I love, which is an equivalent. And I have the rectangular one, not the round one. And it's a tad bigger. The trays are a tad bigger. It's not significant but it is stainless steel. It's got that hinge door that I really, really love, but it's missing the ridges on the trays that I think are important, especially if you're like a little clumsy, like I can be sometimes, um, definitely. So those two are my recommendations for most people, especially if you're at home. I have two kind of economical options that all are about $60. They're both by NutriChef. One is a round one, one is a square-ish one. They're both standalone stacking. And they do have the airflow at the bottom, but I've read really, really good things about them. I actually used to have the NutriChef Nutri -Chef round one, so I know from personal experience that it's legit. I do have to say that because I've owned a round one with air source at the bottom, it's not preferred. So if you can spend the extra $40, I would say get a Gourmia to start and if you can afford to, get a Sasori and if you have high volume production, get the Excalibur. I want to take a couple of moments and just stress a couple of things that are very important. It is absolutely not crucial to have a dehydrator in your cookie decorating process or in your cookie decorating arsenal. A fan is something that is very economical and it can achieve that same level of shine that a dehydrator can get you. It can also help your icing crust over faster. It can also help you prevent craters in small areas. A fan won't be as quick in drying out that icing as a dehydrator, but it can get pretty close. So don't worry if you can't or don't want to get a dehydrator, it's absolutely not crucial. One of the other things that I wanna go over is what a dehydrator will not do for you. A dehydrator is not a replacement for fully allowing your cookies to dry. So a dehydrator allows you to move on to the next step of the icing layering process or airbrushing after your base flood. It allows you to move to on to that next step sooner, but your icing still needs the time to fully dry. And I would not leave your cookies in the dehydrator for hours and hours, hours on end, unless if you live in like 90, 95% humidity where your icing has trouble drying anyway. 
So dehydrators are only used as a tool for your icing to dry in between layers quickly so that you can move on to the next step sooner. But you still have to allow your cookies that full eight, you know, sometimes 16, maybe even 24 hour drying time, depending on your climate. All right, so that's it. I just brain dumped what I know about dehydrators and how to use them in the cookie decorating process. If you have any other questions or comments, please leave them for me below and I will respond. And I'm also going to have everything summarized in a blog post. So if you're more like you want to read this and just spend some time kind of digesting that information, please see the link in the description box. And as usual, if you like what you're seeing here, please give this video a thumbs up. And also please don't forget to subscribe to me and turn on your notifications so you're notified when a new video goes up. Really love you guys. I hope everybody is staying safe during this physical distancing uh, time while we all battle COVID-19 and talk to you soon. So, okay, a detri- yeah. okay, hold on, a dehydrator does- oh, what is with today? Oh.